Hello, hello and welcome to RPA Fridays number 23. And this time, the topic is UiPath Outlook Calendar Activities. So, the topic for today is set and something about me. My name is Roman, I'm from Robot ICT, a company based in Czech Republic where we love to automate every process possible. We also have our own RPA Academy and also our digital network automation tool for larger IT infrastructures. So if you want to know more about us, all the links are in the video description. And if you will like this session, please give us a like and subscribe. And if you will have any questions, ask in chat, chat or in comments and I will answer your questions at the end. So today we are looking at the activities package uh, made by Shreya Sharma. So thank you for that. And these are activity packages from uh, not supported by UiPath, but not made by UiPath. So it's like a activity that is from a user uh, on the internet and it's available from UiPath marketplace. And this activities package, this activity package uh, contains these four activities that I would love to just show you how it works and maybe talk a little bit about it. And uh, you can see if this will be valuable and if you can use it in your project and in your automation. So let's go straight to it. So first, this is an empty project. So I would love to show you how to uh, how to get the, these activities running. So first I need to get the uh, package. So I click manage packages and here in the marketplace directory, you have to go to the marketplace directory. You search for Outlook calendar like this and you find this uh, package by uh, Shreya Sharma and you can just click install. There is only one version uh, so far. It has been published uh, uh, quite recently, but uh, it's still just one version. Anyway, it can be powerful for your automation. And once you click install, you confirm it by hitting save and you wait a little while. So uh, the package is downloaded and installed and added to your project. So let's wait together a little while and let's think about any possible use case for calendar automation, maybe about uh, setting up some automatic meetings or maybe booking uh, slots for uh, your clients for some support calls or anything else that you may come across or even just working with you, the availability, availability of yours in your calendar. So now it's done and I can find these activities here in activities in the folder called uh, UiPath team for some reason and here it is auto calendar activities so these four activities I want to show you and go one by one through them and and check what it, what it is doing I also have my calendar here open on this Saturday so you don't see my agenda and don't see how busy am I and uh, I also put some basic uh, random appointments here for Saturday but usually on Saturday I'm not doing anything of course it's a free day. So the first one is at Outlook appointment. So let's check what this will uh, give us, what options we have. And this activity has uh, some options, some properties, and also some fields that you can fill just straight, uh, straight from the activity itself. And you can see some of them overlap, some of them are extra. So let's go from the activity itself and create a new Outlook appointment appointment for Saturday. Let's say for nine o'clock in the morning. So it will be something like a good morning event, let's call it. And uh, I can also add some buddies. So please all come in pajamas. So the start time and end time, which is pretty obvious what it means, supports a date time value. Date time value is a data type that stores also the date part of, a, let's say, some kind of uh, when something is happening and also the time value. So it's like a start date and time, actually, not only time. So how you, if, if I don't want to use a variable, I can use, I can use uh, just this single method, new dot date time. Oh no, actually date time dot, Okay, now I'm not really sure. I don't uh, no, actually new, sorry, date time. And now I, uh, this is a construction. And now I have three, some options how to create this variable. Uh, I can loop through them by using the arrows up and down. And I see that there are uh, some number of, uh, let's say, arguments that I have to provide to the function so it can generate some date time. So I will go with year, month, day, our 
minute and second. Yeah, you have to supply either full date of and full time. You cannot supply just like hour and leave the seconds empty and so on. So these are all integers. So this year is 2021. Then the month is uh, number 10. A day of Saturday is, let's check it, 16. And then the time, yeah, like this. So hour, minute, second. So nine o'clock, zero, zero minute, zero, zero seconds. And this is it, right? Uh, 16 of uh, October at nine o'clock. And let's copy it so I can reuse it for the second value and have this uh, have this event 45 minutes long. So I will just change the minutes, which is the second from the, from the from second thing from the from the end. And also I can add here in properties location. So let's try it. So let's call it uh, London, for example, and run it and let's see what it will do with my calendar. And let's see. Yeah. So what will happen actually is when I run it, that it will create the, I know what will happen. It will create the event itself, but unfortunately this window will stay up there and uh, it will, it will not complete it. So, but other than that, it looks fine. Here is London, here is please all come in pyjamas. So how can I actually finish this automation uh, and make this activity, this particular activity fully usable? I will keep this open and I will add a click activity just right after it and indicate on screen the save and close button. Great. So let me just fine tune it to make it nice selector. So regardless the title, I don't need the title and I don't need the automation ID here, which uh, is not necessary since I have a lot of uh, a lot of things around and this is this I will e uh, leave like this I can eventually validate it. Yeah, it's valid cool and also I want to use a simulate click activity So let's try it once again with this improvement and since I did not really save and close it I can I can cancel it. Oh, it's there. Okay, so it's there So let's delete it and try it once again uh, if it will automatic automatically finish the task that I wanted so like pretty cool activity, but you have to implement one more click. So let's see, my hands are off the keyboard and it's done. Why right, cool, I think really cool. So now let's keep this uh, as a first example and go with the, with the other activity. So for now, I will delete it. By the way, you can download the workflow from the first link in the video description where are all the activities. Another one I wanted to show you is the one that it's called export calendar items to uh, .ics file. So here I have to supply also start time and end time and also a path to it and ICS file. Oh, it works like this. I supply start time again. I will use uh, I will use just the date and I will use 16 of uh, October like the Saturday. And actually, I tested this for you. You have to you have to put in at least uh, two dates, let's say, so so like this, to, to actually get from the first date. So it's like a range in programming language, right? So you're taking uh, a range of dates, but the last one is not counted. So this will take uh, appointments for 16th of October. Well, you try it yourself and you'll find out how to do it. I have to supply full path to it. I didn't find a way how to use it uh, in with a relative path, but meaning that this is activity made by a fan, by a user, uh, um, I'm pretty satisfied with it. So let's call it export.ics. This is a path to uh, where I want to store it and let's see uh, what it will do. Uh, and I won't really show you on purpose because it would show my calendar and I really don't have any debugging uh, debugging computer without with empty calendar. So uh, here I want to only show you and tell you that if you open this one, it will allow you to take all the, well, actually we imported just, just Saturday, right? So it will give me uh, the question if I can uh, replace it or, or open as a new calendar, right? So if you want to, for example, migrate from one account, one Outlook account to another one, I guess there are thousands of options and this is one of them. Or you can automate this migration for your employees or whatever. So that's another one. And the third one is uh, export calendar items to data table. And I will just uh, 
put them uh, underneath each other so I can just steal the dates. And I will put the same parameters there. The only thing I have to do now, I can delete it. Uh, there are also some other options like in Qlut, whole calendar and so on. And some other uh, things like before, after. And what I want to just do here to, is to add the data table. Um, so let's call it calendar export. And this will be new variable, data table type. And if I run this, I'm getting the data table, but without, without uh, this will be a lot of abstraction. So let's write it somewhere to Excel file. So we see uh, using a workbook activities. So we really see uh, how the export looks. And uh, there will be something to discuss, definitely. So the data table will be calendar export. So let's try it like this. I should have all the Saturday appointments, like four appointments so far yet, in the Excel file. Good, no errors, no mistakes. Uh, where is my file? Um, actually, ah, here, I have two folders. That's the one. So, okay. Um, so this this is the export, and uh, here you can see that there are some things that are not really working as great as you would uh, as you would expect. So uh, also there there are other activities, which is strange because I I only supplied till the end date and not the whole calendar. Anyways, there is something that you have to play around a little bit when you are working with this one, which is strange. Anyways, uh, for uh, for this, I see that there are the names of the activities, also also the dates and times. But this is confusing because the column that and I actually did not include the headers header names. It it has a header name, but I forgot. Never mind. The one here stores the time when the activity starts, and here this one the time where the activity ends. But also this one uh, stores the date when it starts and ends. And this one stores a really wrong date, that's date of today. So this activity version 0 0.1, uh, 0 point, oh, sorry, 1.0 is not working as expected, but can ease some pain for somebody who uh, wants to use it. Anyway, back to my previous screen since it opened a different one. Uh, this is another one. And I want to show you the last one, which is sent Outlook meeting request, which is pretty neat. Uh, let's let's keep this open oh okay no i know what happened i actually i actually changed the month and not the not the date so it i i want it to be like this okay i'm nervous and i'm doing some errors so like this anyway send outlook meeting request uh, is a pretty straightforward activity let's say that i want to do it for a start time of uh 12 o'clock so I need to use again this format for the date, and this this uh, event will end at one o'clock. And now I need to specify to whom I'm sending it. If it's kind of clever, so it works in the same way as you would create that request in Outlook. So if you use a full name of, of somebody, uh, like full name, like uh, I don't know, Peter. Peter Johnson, then it will work. And but it's better to use email addresses. In, so like Peter Johnson at something, and this will work for sure. And also you can add some other things like who's optional, who's required, and uh, whom you want to send it. So you can a little bit play around, or if it's an all-day event and so on, a location also, title and body. I will not send now a meeting request to anyone. If I would send it to myself, it will actually just appear in my calendar and it will work like the first activity, but without uh, uh, need it of clicking it. So today this was uh, all I wanted to show you. I wanted to just make a quick introduction that this pack of activities works. Why would you love to, why would you use them if they are maybe not so, uh, uh, not so how to say, uh, finished or they there are mistakes uh, maybe because the other way how to go to calendar is using the uh, office activities or the Microsoft uh, how you call them suite activities and those activities need a, a better uh, setup or deeper setup 
like setting up uh, APIs and uh, authentication and so on to actually access your calendar. This one like just simulates you being accessing your own calendar, the same as the activities for the Outlook mails, the basic one, general ones. And also I wanted to show that it's really cool that some people are trying and they are creating uh, on the site of their work uh, new activities for UiPath that are available from Marketplace. So I also wanted to show you that there are there is a thing called Marketplace and you can search for interesting activities packages made by, uh, let's call it third parties, sometimes companies, sometimes individuals, and it's pretty interesting. Of course, uh, nobody will, for, for example, guarantee me that these activities will not go into any failure. There may, there may be bugs and so on, and I cannot then complain if my enterprise project is not working because of an activity I found on, in, on the internet. Uh, well, I can cry and cry, but other than that, uh, you can use it for your benefits. So, uh, time for your questions, please, and uh, you please leave them in the comments and I will answer them a little bit later. Uh, thank you for, for coming and see you next Friday. If you would like to, if you would like to download the workflow, you can use it, the first link in the video description. This also leads to our uh, Robot ICD community forum where we publish some RPA challenges and some uh, articles about automation, uh, mainly about UiPath. So thank you for watching. Have a wonderful weekend and uh, I wish you happy